Please continue the debate of the Nigeria's constitution as the amendment process continues. Some eminent Nigerians continue to ask for an overhaul rather than an amendment. And an APC chieftain raises alarm over what he says is a disconnection between Buhari administration and the party members in the programs of government. We'll give you details of that in a moment. Hello everyone and welcome to Politics Today Live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Wakimali at Channels Television's uh, Global Headquarters in Abuja. Well, I'm out of field today in the nation's capital. And tonight we will be looking at unraveling for you some of those things you probably are yearning to know about the constitution amendment <clears throat> process because the man leading this task is my guest tonight. So stay with me everyone on this uh, ride in another half hour. But before we get talking to my guest, let's tell you that the National Secretary of the All Progressives Congress, Senator Hakman Udwade, is asking President Muhammad Buhari's administration to domicile more of his intervention programs with party members in order to get the public exposure those interventions need. He said that he's at an APC Professionals Forum event which was held other parties national secretariat in Abuja, an event created to showcase the scorecard of several ministries under the Buhari administration as it marks six years in office. Can you see it? You can see what we have achieved within the space of one year. We have bring peace and stability to the APC family. Part of the effort of his president to reposition this party to be stronger. As God will have it, instead of weakening our position, we are getting stronger, stronger, and stronger. And so the Senate began a national public hearing on the Constitution Amendment which a process that has uh, started a few weeks ago. And so they are in Abuja trying to harmonize all of the exercise and the processes leading up to this point. From the regional, um, now we are at the national stage. The national public hearing brings to the fore most of the conversations from the regional levels and the conversation were as engaging, engaging as they were pungent. Take a listen to some of the speakers at today's event. Uh, we do know that there are critical elements uh, in the passage of any reform or amendment to the Constitution. And we do know that the President, President Buhari, has also assured uh, his interest in what is going on. And we do hope that uh, citizens' imputes, which have been clearly and very well articulated and outlined by the Senate Committee uh, on the Review of the Constitution, very, very well driven by the Deputy Senate President, would be able to drive home this process and give us a constitution that reflects demands of citizens uh, before the end of this year. All right then, I know you have many questions on your mind as relating to the constitution amendment in view of the many problems confronting the nation. Tonight, I have the chairman of the constitution amendment committee and the deputy senate of um, uh, of the Ninth Assembly, Senator Ovie Omar Gege is our guest tonight on the program. Thank you so much, uh, Deputy Senate President, for joining us tonight. Thank you Thanks for having me. I think we should begin tonight's conversation because a lot of Nigerians are interested in this Constitution Amendment. It's generated a lot of debate, and one of the conversation, or is the debate whether or not we need an amendment. An argument really is that the 1999 constitution is not a people's constitution. It was foisted or first done on us by the military in 1998, crossing into the 1999 transition. And some have argued that it is a flawed constitution. Some call it a fraud. Well, and that you cannot, and that you cannot build on such fraud. So why are you embarking on an amendment instead of an overhaul? Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for that question. Uh, frankly, uh, 
this very issue has become very, very topical uh, of late. Uh, for some of us, um, we can uh, accept that, tolerate that, you know, from people who don't know. Uh, but uh, it becomes a little bit, little bit uh, perplexing, a little bit annoying, in fact, uh, when you hear people who ought to know, and indeed, who do know uh, that we do not have the power to write a new constitution. The only power we have is to alter the constitution. And that is what the extant legal order provides for. Uh, uh, the framers of the constitution, and I was one of them, uh, in their wisdom, decided that it would be best to have incremental alterations as opposed to total overhaul, a total rewrite. And that's why they provided under section 9 of the constitution on how to go about this. Now, uh, so, so, sorry, sorry. So let's get it clear. You're saying that we as a citizen, we do not, under this law, under the 1999 constitution, we do not have the power to overwrite or to have a new, a brand new constitution. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely, absolutely. Can you explain on yes, what you Yes, what mean? section 9 of the constitution envisages, and, and indeed what it does say, is that we can alter any provision of the constitution. It doesn't say we can alter all of the provisions of the Constitution. We can alter any provision. And it proceeds to set out the methodology, the mode for doing just that. And for us to be able to achieve that, it says that we need, in fact, not just uh, 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 Section 9. Now, those who are saying that we should do, that we have the power to do a rewrite, they forget that Section 9 for you to be able to do a rewrite of a brand new constitution, you need to amend section 9 of the constitution. And for you to amend section 9 of the constitution, you require four-fifths votes in the Senate, which is about 88 uh, senators out of 109, and you require about uh, 288 uh, members of uh, uh, the of House of Reps. reps. For you to, yeah, out of 360. That's just for you to amend that section 9 by itself. Why is it you difficult know? for us to do that? Well, if you need Section 9 amended, then you have to come forward with a, a bill to that effect. Uh, as I speak to you, we've received uh, uh, more than uh, 350 or thereabout uh, a memoranda uh, on the amendment of the Constitution, and not one, not one uh, is requesting for an amendment of Section 9 of the Constitution. That is probably because they know how difficult you know, it is to muster uh, uh, 88 votes out of 109. To even muster two thirds of the votes is almost impossible. Not talk about uh, uh, four fifths, you know, of uh, the Senate and four fifths of uh, of uh, uh, the House of Reps. But the bottom line is this: under the extant Constitution, the only thing we are permitted to do is incremental amendment or alteration. And this is nothing new. We've we've seen uh, people every day when it suits them, you know. Uh, they allude to the fact that, oh, we borrowed our system from the United States of America, which is all well and good. But even in the U.S., and uh, they've had their constitution now for almost 250 years, and they've had about 27 amendments. It never occurred to them at any time, so, oh, you know, we, uh, despite the fact they needed, they needed amendments, they never sought to jettison the entire U.S. constitution and do a, uh, uh, a new uh, uh, constitution or a, a full rewrite. They never did that. Instead, they've been going with incremental uh, amendments by way of, uh, uh, I think they've had about 27 so far. You know, and here in Nigeria, uh, at least for the first uh, 10 years, we tried uh, uh, several times to have uh, some incremental uh, amendments here. We failed. But this is going to be the fifth alteration. Exactly. Be successful. The first alteration we succeeded in doing was, I believe, in 2010. And ever since we've done, we've, we've gotten the second alteration, the third alteration, and the fourth. Now, if we succeed with it, this will be the fifth. But this is the only way to go. Now, for those who are agitating for a new constitution, there's a reason they're agitating for this. And I mean, there are certain provisions they want embedded in new constitution. All they need to do is go back home. We are the elected representatives of our people. Our constituents are back home. If this is what they want, they can mount pressure on us. I, come, I represent Delta Central Central District from Delta State. Now, in the thematic areas of uh, about 16 issues, what my constituents want, if they feel so strongly about any particular issue, they will reach out to me. They will mount the requisite pressure on me. They will do the same with my member, 
representing me in the Federal House of Reps in Ugeli Udu Federal Constituency. And once that is the position they've taken, we have no choice but to abide by that decision because we, at some point down the road, we may go back again you know, to renew our mandate. And once uh, uh, they take the position that uh, we came to Abuja and we didn't uh, 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 follow their, their dictates, they will pay a price. So what I would expect people to do is to go back uh, mobilize uh, yourselves, reach out to your constituents, and then let your, let, reach out to your representatives, and then those ones will in turn lobby uh, other members. That is the only alternative. That, that is, is the only way. Absolutely. So, no other way. Aside that, because, it, I mean, is there anything wrong, Senator, when Nigerians discover that what is guiding them, the document that binds this country, is fraudulent according to them? It's military in nature. It does not represent the voice of the people. It's not even a people's constitution because they say ethnic nationalities were not consulted in the framing of the constitution. Is there anything re by, uh, I mean, wrong in re retracing our steps when we know that we've gotten it wrong? Absolutely. If the people say that this is how we want to go, is there anything wrong for them to sit at the table and say, let us change it altogether? There's nothing wrong, but there's a process. There's an extant legal order. That is this document, the constitution. Say what you may about it. That is the operative legal document that we're using today. And it has set out the only mode for which it could be amended. So if that is a decision they have made, they should come through this process. There is no provision of this constitution that cannot be amended. Whatever they want amended. You see, the only people like us, let me tell you, all we seek, I, you see, I come from a school of thoughts. As a Nigerian, I believe that. We are stronger together as a country, as Nigerians. Therefore, to that extent, you can tweak the constitution through an amendment process, provided it is one that preserves the unity of this country. I am for it. But there's nothing in this constitution that cannot be amended. It's just that, yes, some will require uh, entrenched votes than others. Like I just mentioned, you know, that's section nine. Uh, uh, section 9, Section 8, dealing with uh, uh, state creation and boundary adjustment, and then, of course, uh, uh, any proposed amendments to all of Chapter 4, you know, of the Constitution dealing with fundamental human rights, you know, all those ones, they all require for fifth majority. But you still can do it. It's, it's, it's not impossible, okay, so, but it's difficult. All right. Now, it's good that you put in some light into the conversation, and you are a Nigerian, you are hearing the agitations of Nigerians, and what Nigerians are saying the insecurity in the land, the poverty level, the state of the economy. Nigerians are worried. They are wondering how they will get out of this quagmire. So at this point, the big question is they've looked at what happened in the 7th Assembly. In the 8th Assembly, this constitution amendment process failed. So their fear is that how will this one on the 9th Assembly not go in the way of the 7th and 8th Assembly? And billions of naira were spent in that process. No, thank you very much, Ashu. Uh, I'm not so sure uh, I will agree with your characterization that uh, the uh, seventh and uh, uh, attempts of, to to alter the constitution in the seventh and eighth assembly failed. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, but they were not assented to by the president at the time. That's not correct either. Uh, I can point straight away. Uh, there was this, this uh, bill that uh, dealt with uh, it was titled "Let Not Too Young to Run Bill." Uh, 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 that dealt with uh, the reduction in, uh, in, in the age of qualifications, you know, for membership of the House of Reps and, and the Senate and the House of Assembly. Uh, that passed, and it was ascended to, ascended to by Mr. President. And there are several other bills that, uh, that passed. Stand, um, yeah. standalone bills. Absolutely. And whatever we are doing now, too, is going to be standalone. You see, uh, that, that, that is one so of the... So you've learned from those processes. Absolutely. That's the what we gained, you know, from a uh, 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 membership of uh, uh, the 8th Assembly. Uh, uh, because of uh, the challenges faced by both the 6th and 7th Assembly, uh, the, the leadership and the membership of uh, the Constitution Review uh, Committee in the 8th Senate decided to, to bifurcate uh, the issues and uh, bring this bill on a standalone basis. You know, so, in uh, peacemate. In peace so mail, it then yes. means that instead of bunching everything, and yeah. if, if everything fails, it's, it everything fails collapses the first exactly. flight on the exactly. So if, if one fails, you can move on to the next absolutely, one. Absolutely, absolutely. But we are due for a break. Just in 20 seconds, if you can tell Nigerians, because I know you're close to President Buhari, have you gotten his assurance that he's in support of this process, that he will ascend to it? Absolutely, absolutely. There are things that are dear to Mr. President, 
uh, he knows, he, you see, Mr. President wants the very best for this country. Any bill that emanates from this exercise that is one that is geared towards preserving the unity of this country, you can count on Mr. President to sign. I can give you that, I can give the guarantee. So Nigerians, I'm holding, on, I'm holding you on to that, Absolutely. that the President will assent to it. He will assent to any bill that emanates from this process that preserves the unity of this country. All right. Let's take a break now. And so when we come back, I know you are talking about state policing and some a lot of issues, devolution of power, autonomy to, to judiciary, to the local government areas. Those are some of the issues we will ask Senator Ovi Omar when we return from this break, everyone. Just again. again. Thank you so much and welcome back. A conversation with Senator Ovi Omar Gege, the chairman of the Committee on Constitutional Amendment and the Deputy Senate President continues. Thank you so much, Deputy Senate President, for your time tonight. Um, Nigeria is facing a lot of challenges, security, and a lot of issues. And the agitations, you saw a lot of people who pre did the presentation today they were very agitated about a lot of things, things that will affect the monies in the pockets, the food on their table. The first question will be the issue of security, whether or not State policing, for example, is being catered for. And how are you tackling this matter in this amendment process? Well, let me just say this up front. Uh, as a presiding officer and also the chairman of this consumer review exercise, uh, I have not taken a position on any of these bills, uh, except, of course, maybe uh, uh, one or two bills you know, that uh, I sponsored uh, myself, uh, maybe the one dealing with... Uh, uh, the uh, set aside of about 30 percent of uh, membership of the Federal Executive Council uh, for the youths. What is the yeah. details of that? Because I'm hearing that you want uh, Nigerians of age 30, between age 30 and 35, to be in the federal cabinet. 30 percent of that, and in the state that you want 40 percent. How feasible is that? Very, very feasible. Uh, and if I may just correct you, it's not. Uh, uh, 30 to 35 uh, uh, years, it is 25 to 30 years. We want to capture the very essence of our youth. Uh, the reason we're doing that is uh, uh, we have this belief uh, that arising from uh, uh, the NSAS uh, protest, uh, I have taken the position that I would rather have these youth sit down in the Federal Executive Council, sit down in uh, uh, the State Executive Council in the various states, uh, than having them uh, uh, go protest uh, at the Lekki uh, 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 tool gate. Uh, if you go to Rwanda today, uh, the Minister of Dig Digital Communications uh, is 19 years old, uh, very, 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 very talented young man, and is uh, uh, really, really excelling. And I don't see why uh, we should keep these youths away from government. And these are people that constitute about 70% you know, of our population today. Uh, for we, you know, most of us here in the National Assembly and in governance today, uh, we belong to the remaining 30 percent, the, the, do I say, the, the dying generation or whatever. So they own this country. So uh, uh, it is my belief that they are better off uh, uh, participating in decision making on uh, uh, matters that affect uh, the well-being of the country. Because it's their country. In a couple of years, we're going to be out of the way, you know, and uh, uh, the earlier we, we expose them uh, to these positions, uh, the better. Uh, they can make their mistakes, you know, but they're just 30 percent, you know, of the cabinet. Uh, there will be others, so, for want of a better expression, maybe they're adults, you never must use that expression, that they will, they'll be there. But we want the youth to sit in the Federal Executive Council and participate so in the decision-making process. So, uh, invariably, so Nigerians may understand, if this bill goes through and it, it passes, it then means that in, as ministers, we will find 25-year-old ministers. Absolutely. Federal ministers. Absolutely. And 25-year-old commissioners. Uh, commissioners. Yes. 30%. 30%, yes. And you're sure this can go through? There's no reason. See, it depends on the youth of this country. My job is to create the enabling environment for this bill to be taken on, on the floor during plenary, which will come up sometime in July for a vote. It is their job. They are the beneficiaries of this bill. It is their job to go mobilize. It's about them. It's not about us. It's about them. So it is, it is left for them to go home, mobilize, reach out to their senators, reach out to their members of House of Reps, reach out to the members of uh, the Houses of Assembly who will ratify our decisions right there and get this thing passed. If they're interested in doing that, you see, we're giving them an option. It is either here in the Federal Executive Council or elected to get. I'm sure they were elected to come here. It's exciting to hear that 
uh, you're thinking about engaging more young Nigerians because if you look at it from the early 60s you've had young military officers who took charge of this country but let's go back to the issue of the state policing mm -hmm. how much of priority are you giving that because some of the governors are complaining that they cannot take charge of security in their domain well let me let me say this uh, the issue of state police uh, uh, is one of uh, the key areas uh, uh, that we're looking at uh, we've received a lot of uh, 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 memoranda on that uh, and we've had people uh, uh, speak uh, uh, very, very positively uh, about it too during uh, the zona hearings, uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's an important issue. But you must understand that there's divergence of opinion on that. You know, there are, there are those uh, who are championing it, who believe that uh, that is really is the best and the only way available uh, to help uh, uh, address these uh, issues of insecurity. Uh, uh, there are others who share a contrary opinion. Uh, that uh, drain, experience, drain from their experiences during uh, uh, the time of uh, uh, the native uh, authority police uh, uh, with the way and manner the, uh, those uh, at the helm of affairs, you know, uh, used or uh, abused those powers. Uh, it's a big issue. Uh, some right now are looking at what is happening in the state uh, with the way and manner the governors are using uh, uh, the state independent electoral commissions, you know, uh, to supposedly conduct elections, uh, which ends up being selections, you know, uh, people are saying, well, th th this is a power uh, that uh, the states have and see how they have uh, abused it. Uh, so if they can do this with state independent electoral commissions, you know, uh, is it, what's the guarantee that uh, they will not uh, also abuse uh, the powers of the state police? Because uh, some states, even right now, already con even though uh, the commission commissions of police in the states report uh, to the IG, but for the most part, you know, uh, the governors are in charge of those uh, commissions of police anyway, you know. Uh, and then there's also the, the, the issue of uh, 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 the resources, you know, to pay uh, uh, salaries. Or some have argued that uh, the states, uh, most of the states almost went bankrupt, uh, but for the benevolence of, uh, uh, of uh, the intervention of Mr. President in uh, providing bailouts, you know, uh, for those states uh, to survive. Uh, and those are the same states that will not be uh, in charge of... Uh, 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 state police, then what now happens? If peradventure in three, uh, four, five, six months, they're not able to uh, pay the salaries and there's no president Muhammadu Buhari to give uh, uh, bailouts. You know, what will not happen with those arms, you know, in the hands of uh, these people? Would they be leasing out those arms or arm robbers? Nobody knows. So these are the arguments people are making. Like I said, I take no position in this. Uh, my job is to collate the views of our people, uh, uh, condense those views into bills, and bring those bills to a vote on the floor. On that day, I have one vote, just right. like every other senator. So, I just have about 60 seconds to go, and I have three questions. And I don't know how we're going to tackle it, but they are equally very important. Uh, because a lot of Nigerians have argued that if this exercise does not capture the essence or resolve our problems, then it is a waste of time. And, and people are, ask, are also saying, why are you not, because of the... Uh, uh, the resources that are not very much there. Why is the House of Reps doing their own uh, public hearing uh, and the Senate is doing their own? Why are you not conjoining it? Uh, frankly, uh, we try to have uh, uh, a joint uh, uh, zonal uh, hearing, uh, but there was a conflict in uh, uh, scheduling because they had to do their, their security uh, summit, which is just as, just as important, of course. Uh, uh, so we had to proceed. Uh, but I can tell you that we have a synergy. Of course, the Deputy Speaker of the House of Reps, who is the Chairman of uh, the Ad Hoc Committee in the House, uh, he and I, we are very, very close. Uh, we compare notes. We are on the same page. We respect everything we do here. The thematic areas we're looking at, the same thematic areas I'm looking at, uh, there's also a good synergy between uh, our consultants, uh, who for the most part are doing most of this job. It's their job to collate and condense all, this, uh, all of these views into bills. We are working together. So uh, I think at the end of the day, you know, uh, we're on the same page. All right. On a final note, you know, I mean, and if you've heard, because I mean, I'm not just reiterating, I mean, it's something that you are, you are aware of, that some Nigerians are agitating for unicameral legislature, that what we are operating right now because of cost of governance is too much. They are asking, uh, perhaps for your job, because they say we do not need Senate and House of Reps. We need just one federal parliament. Are you considering that into the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's one of the issues we're looking at. You know, uh, you see, 
You see, this is not about us. It's about the Nigerian people. It is what they want. If it is their desire that one house, in this case, as advocated by the governor of Ondo State, uh, that the Senate be uh, uh, abrogated uh, uh, in place instead of uh, uh, the House of Reps, so be it. But there's only one way to go about that. Come and amend the Constitution. Bring your bills. Mobilize the people. Talk is cheap. You have to cast your vote here. You know, the governor of Ondo State, for instance, and others who share in, uh, the same view can go and mobilize and come and uh, influence the vote here. All right. On that day, I'll cast my vote just like every other senator will. Uh, some of the things you have said tonight will be on record. And I know that because Nigerians are very much pressed about some of the challenges we're facing right now. And they're going to be making reference to some of the things that the assurances that you have given. But the voting on the floor, is it going to be open? Are we going to be able to see how each of the lawmakers vote? Yes, absolutely. We're working on that. Uh, although it will be electronic, yes, but uh, we're going to ensure that uh, uh, the, the process is open and uh, they'll be able to, to see how each uh, senator uh, casts his or her vote. But let me assure Nigerians that this is a process that will produce a people's alteration, which will be different from the charges they've been making that uh, uh, the 1999 uh, uh, Constitution was imposed by the military. They now have a chance to own it and make it a people's alteration right. as opposed to a militarily uh, forced uh, uh, constitution. Senator Ovio Omwagege, the chairman of uh, the Committee on Constitutional Amendment and the Deputy Senate President, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, that's our show for today, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Shion Kimbalo. Bye-bye.